Yeah. Some expression, right? Some gesture. Okay. By way of my body, I can say hello to you, I can you know, say pranam, I can touch your feet, I can give you ashivad, right? All this is not involving any physical facility. I might use some physical facility as a gesture, as a symbol, right? So I present a piece of, you know, you know some material or one flower, right? All these are just gestures, right? Gesture. Not essential to expression of the feeling of respect. So if I have the feeling of respect, I can express this feeling of respect without, you know, the help of any physical facility. Similarly, the feeling of trust, the feeling of affection. Right? So as we go on, we'll see this feeling of care is the only feeling which involves physical facility. But the rest of them either you don't need any physical facility or if you require physical facility, it is only symbolic. It's just to use a gesture. Even if you don't have it, doesn't matter. You can do without physical facility. But that we will see <coughs> as we go along. So let us see these four statements we have made about relationship. Is true for you, not true for you. First, the relationship is there. You don't have to make relationship, you have to understand relationship. And you have to ensure the fulfillment of relationship. And this relationship is between oneself and the other self. Second, there are feelings in relationship in one eye for another eye, in one self for another self. Third is, these feelings can be identified, they are definite. So there are nine feelings. Fourth, their fulfillment leads to mutual happiness, leads to my happiness as well as happiness of the other. And these are the nine feelings. So you find out whether these four statements are true or not for you, whether the nine feelings are naturally acceptable to you or not. Whether their fulfillment will lead to mutual happiness or it will not lead to mutual happiness. Affection, love, any difference is there? I don't know, literal meaning. Yeah, we will. Then that <coughs> the difference is that this feeling of being related to the other is called affection. The feeling of being related to everyone is called love. So the love is the culmination of this feeling of affection. But we'll define that. We'll define, we'll explain all these things one by one. When you mention <coughs> for the example of the Jesus, I think for the uh, participants behind there, uh, I on two of us, <laughs> I would like to share the uh, experiences which I thought this. Uh, which will serve as a guidance, or which will serve as a uh, guidance for their thinking and understanding the systems. But all this trust, respect, affection, care, guidance, reverence, glory, gratitude, love. These things uh, we try with the human intelligence by framing our constitution, by framing our law, by having our policies. But it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, that we have to understand. It has to start from the inner self, by individual. That is what I think is done. Uh, let me uh, share the experience, little one or two uh, instances of the court. Many uh, people come for the, in the, in the court seeking for justice. And then justice has to be based on the evidence. And then if you have no evidence, then, uh, uh, the, then the justice will be tilted. It will go on 
Yes, it will be depending on the uh, evidence. Purely. There were cases, we know that A person is innocent, B person is a criminal. We know that. But then we cannot protect this innocence. And then we, the judges know that we have to sign the uh, verdict in favor of the criminal in, uh, because of the, the lack of the evidence, for example. So, uh, so uh, in issuing such verdict, every family member of that, uh, of that next gen. So they feel to the court, towards the court, oh, no, it's no justice. And then what they are feeling is correct. But then we have to understand, no policies, no rules, no constitutions can bring peace and harmony. It has to be the individual. When a child, when uh, an uh, uh, innocent child, when a mother is uh, feeding a, you know, a milk, when a mother is giving a, a, a lot of uh, affection to a child, that child has no constitution, no rules, no, no, uh, no laws are free for that, but that child still knows that. That mother, when uh, you know, he or she is in the arms of the mother, the child feels secure, the child could recognize that affection and even respond. So, even for the animals, like cats and dogs, when we feed them with affection, they respond. So one has to understand here that all these things work from the individual point of view. Like for example, the trust, respect, affection, care. When we mention here, we have to know that where this, how this trust comes. Where it originates, how it functions, by just mere uh, putting there as a trust. We now assuming that what is meant by trust? You know, the different assumptions, definition of the trust, how it comes. So I think these are the issues that we need to reflect within ourselves so that we could put together and share <laughs> the, uh, among us to. So this is how I feel that this, uh, this is how the workshop should leave and then we should have the understanding, common understanding. That's what, this is what I want to say, but not to defend. Uh, we may have done a lot of... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the wrong verdict may have been. Because none of us are done. <laughs> we must accept that. Yeah, it's quite you know, correct. I mean, this point, that justice takes place in this hand. <coughs> and who is responsible for doing justice? Individual. Individual. So we don't expect the court to do the justice. We have to understand that the justice is founded on human beings. <coughs> right? Based on their understanding and their feeling. Right? And it has to be fulfilled with the family. That's why we are talking about this justice. Then we are talking about harmony in family. The justice has to be ensured in the family. <coughs> right? Ensured by human being, individuals, right? Having the right understanding and the right feeling. So, the court, you know, going to the court to get justice is not going to work. Right? It will work only when you have the right understanding and right feeling. Otherwise, it is not well. And where does it start the process of justice? In the family or in the court? In the family. In the family. In fact, this harmony in family, if I am able to ensure this harmony in family, that is, I am able to ensure these four things. This is what is called justice.
when you talk about justice, right? This has to be ensured in family. That is the point I was trying to make. That if you expect this justice to take place in the court, right? If it is not in the family, then it will not work. Right? And if you look at the foundation of this justice, is this understanding in the self and right feeling in the self, in the individual. So, right understanding and right feeling in the individual. Right? And on the basis of that, identification of the relationship with other human beings. Right? And fulfillment of these feelings in relationship is what leads to justice. Today what we are doing, we are outsourcing everything. So we have outsourced the justice also. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> so this will not work. So it is not the fault of the judges, right? It is our fault, fault that we have not understood our responsibility of doing justice in the family. We have to ensure the justice. We have to understand the relationship. We have to understand the feelings in relationship. We have to ensure these feelings in us and we have to ensure the fulfillment of these feelings in relationship. We have to do it and we have to do it in family. Because justice has to take place in the family. Right? And we are all responsible for it. We cannot pass on this responsibility to the court. So this outsourcing would not work. <laughs> <laughs> so if we have to understand this relationship, this feeling in relationship, and we have to ensure this you know, feeling in us, and we have to also ensure the fulfillment of this feeling leading to mutual happiness, then let's try to understand this feeling. You know, feelings of trust, feeling of respect, feeling of affection, and so on. And as we go on, we will see how much we have been able to understand about the trust till now. And because we were not able to understand about the trust, we didn't have the feeling of trust. And we didn't have the feeling of trust, we could not ensure the fulfillment of this feeling of trust. <coughs> So all this, you know, similarly the feeling of respect, the feeling of affection and so on. <coughs> so let's take them one by one. Let me talk about this feeling of trust. I write 2.1 because this is the second harmony in family. So the first feeling Harmony in family, which is trust. written down a definition of trust. I have written, written, trust means to be assured. And when do I feel assured? When I can see that the other wants to make me happy and prosper. Because this is what ultimately I want, happiness and prosperity. If 
I can see the other wants to make me happy and prosperous, or he wants to work for my happiness and prosperity. I will feel assured with him. That is the meaning of trust. On the other hand, if I have any doubt that the other person can make me unhappy or dislike, will I will I feel assured, or I will have fear from him? Fear from him, right? So mistrust. What is fear? Lack of trust, or distrust, or mistrust. <coughs> so trust means to feel assured, to be assured. This feeling of trust comes, feeling of assurance comes when I have the clarity that the other person wants to make me happy and prosperous. If I don't have this clarity and if I have a doubt in place of this, then it will lead to mistrust. <coughs> so this is the definition of trust. Now, in order to clarify this further, okay, what I would do is I will write some type of statement okay, and ask you to verify, okay, and that will make a lot of clarity about this feeling of trust. <coughs> so the first statement is. There is a tick mark here, right? You can see this tick mark? Yes. Second, I want to make the other happy. Now ask yourself, what is your natural acceptance? To make other happy or unhappy? What is your natural acceptance? To make yourself happy and happy. Happy. To make others happy and happy. Happy. So there is a tick mark here. <coughs> then three. The other. wants to make himself happy. True. Tick mark? Yes. yes. The other wants to make me happy. I don't know. The other wants to make me happy. Tick mark, question mark. <laughs> This is what is happening. This is the trouble. So that is where we are. So first three, you know, one A, two A, three A. Okay. You put a tick mark. The fourth, you have a question mark. <laughs> right. There is a slight shift which is taking place in you and you are not even aware of it. We have tried in at least 200 workshops and this is the response. <laughs> so it is not something particular with this group of people, right? With everyone you try, they are very willing to put tick mark here, but when it comes to the fourth A, there is a question mark. Now, look at the competence part. This is about the natural acceptance, about the intention part. What is naturally acceptable to me? Now, let me start 
exploring into my competence part, one being. I want to make myself happy. That is a tick mark, right? But I am able to make myself happy always. What is the condition? Tick mark, question mark. Question mark. Now you can see here. Question mark has come right from the first place. When you are talking about the competent part, there is a question mark here in one way. Okay. Then, to be, I am able to make the other happy always. So, there is a question mark. Then, the other is made, able to make himself happy all the time, always. And the fourth B, the other is able to make me happy always. <laughs> so there is a big question mark here. This is regarding the competence. This is regarding the natural acceptance, which I also use the term intention for it. So this is my real intention. And this is, has to do with my competence. <coughs> now, if you observe this carefully, lot of conclusions can be drawn out of it. Now, what is happening? When you are trying to look into yourself, 1A and 2A, right? you are evaluating yourself on the basis of your intention on the basis of your natural acceptance. You think that I want to make myself happy, I want to make others happy. Therefore, I am a good person. This is what you think of yourself, isn't it? I am a good person. But when you start looking at the other person, you try to look at his competence. Right? And you find that sometimes he is happy, sometimes unhappy, sometimes he is making you happy, sometimes he is making you unhappy. Right? So, you see that he is lacking the competence. Therefore, you start doubting, thinking that he is a bad person. So, what you are doing? You are evaluating your competence and you think you are a good person. You are evaluating his competence and you think that he is a bad person. Do you do this? Or not? Yes. yes. So when you are evaluating yourself, you are evaluating your intention. When you are evaluating the other, you are evaluating his competence. Right? And this is so gone so deep into you that when you commit a mistake, right? Like a glass falls down from the table, right? And it breaks. Because of you, what do you say? <laughs> the glass broke by mistake. <laughs> but then it is broken by somebody else. You have broken the glass. You can see this difference. Then I would say, stop it. <laughs> so for you, right, it happens by mistake. For the other, you did a mistake. You see that difference?
Is that clear? Yes. When you do it, you think that it has happened by mistake. Right? When it happens with the other, you think that he has done a mistake. It is not happened. He has done it. What does it mean? You are evaluating his competence and on the basis of doubting, on the basis of this, doubting his intention. So this question mark here, 4A, has come from your evaluation of the competence of the other and making a judgment about the intention of the other. Yes. And this is what is causing mistrust, trust, doubt on intention. This is what is creating doubt on intention. So you don't doubt your intention. 1A and 2A, you are putting a tick mark, despite the fact that you don't have the competence. Right? You are not able to put tick mark in 1A, 1B and 2B. But when it comes to other people, you look at their competence, which you yourself don't have. <laughs> So you look at their competence and on the basis of evaluation of their competence, you start doubting their intention. That is what is creating the trouble. That is what is creating the trouble. Therefore, what I need to do is, I need to evaluate my intention. I need to evaluate my competence. I need to evaluate the intention, the natural acceptance of the other. And I need to evaluate the competence of the other. Right? Then what will happen? If I do this, no? evaluate my intention, my natural acceptance, evaluate my competence. Then evaluate my you know, intention of the other, the natural acceptance of the other and evaluate the competence of the other. Then what will be the result? <coughs> then I will have trust on intention of myself. I will also have trust on intention of the other. Right? But when it comes to making a program with the other person, I will evaluate my competence and I will evaluate the competence of the other. And I will make the program on the basis of my competence and the competence of the other. So if you look at what we are doing here, you know, for last three days, is essentially this. I have trust on my intention and trust on your intention. I know everybody sitting here wants to understand what is right. They want to do what is right. And they have the capacity to understand what is right. This trust on intention is there. With this trust, with this acceptance, right? I am evaluating my competence. I am evaluating your competence. And on the basis of that evaluation, I am making the program. For example, I evaluated that I can communicate in English. You can understand English. Therefore, <coughs> We are communicating in English, right? <coughs> if you know Hindi, if you know Hindi, then I prefer to communicate in Hindi. Because I know Hindi, you know Hindi. But because you do not know Hindi, and I know Hindi, therefore I cannot communicate in Hindi. So I have evaluated my competence, I have evaluated your competence. On the basis of that, I am making the program. Right? Then, I have also evaluated that though you want to understand what is right and do what is right, right? but if you look at your state of being, right? if you look at your state,